are a lot of different ways to preserve food long term. But most of these methods transform the food in pretty obvious ways. Freezing food seems different. I mean, can you tell which fish was previously frozen? I can't, at least not from a glance. But that's because freezing food leaves its mark on the inside. This is Minute Food. When you freeze food, and we're talking whole or at least minimally processed food, like fruits, veggies, meats, and fish, when you freeze these foods, you inevitably damage them. And we're not talking freezer burn here. We're talking about the damage that happens when the water inside food freezes. Like when you put chicken in the freezer, the water inside the chicken starts freezing into microscopic ice crystals. These crystals are basically tiny icy daggers, and they poke holes in the cellular structure of the chicken. Once you take the chicken out of the freezer and those icy daggers start melting, the damaged cells can no longer hold onto all that water. That's why you get this. It's called drip loss, and it's the moisture a food loses after freezing and thawing. In chicken, drip loss can amount to 8% or more of the meat's initial weight. That's a lot of moisture gone. Plus, since the now holy cells aren't as structurally sound as they used to be, you might notice the meat gets a little mushy. I tend to notice this mushiness more in fish that's been frozen than chicken, though. That's because fish tends to contain more water than other meats, and more tiny daggers means more damage to the cells. In general, though, meat and fish hold up better in the freezer than fruits and veggies do. One reason is that animal products tend to contain less water, and therefore develop fewer damaging daggers, than fruits and veggies. But the bigger reason for this difference is that in animal muscle, most of the water is located outside the cells. So when those icy daggers form, they don't necessarily cause all that much damage to the cellular scaffolding. Fruits and veggies, though, hold most of their water inside their cells. When that water freezes, it tends to wreak a lot more havoc on the cells themselves. I mean, look at the texture and drip loss from these strawberries. Don't get me wrong, they will be awesome over ice cream or in a smoothie. But nobody is going to mistake them for fresh berries. And produce with even more water ends up basically unusable after a stint in the freezer. In other words, because of how they're built, some foods just don't fare as well in the freezer as others. We're kind of stuck with that consequence of biology. But there's another big aspect to this whole freezing thing that you do have more control over. And that's how the food is frozen. As I dug deeper into the science of frozen foods, which turns out to be a pretty sizable area of research, one interesting thing kept coming up. The faster food freezes, the better quality it ends up post-freeze. That's because the quicker freezing happens, the more crystals form, but the smaller all those crystals end up. And the smaller the crystals are, the less damage they'll do to the microscopic structure of the food. With less damage, you get less moisture loss, better texture, and in many cases, quantifiably tastier food. In other words, if you want to maintain the integrity and maximize the deliciousness of your frozen food, you should do whatever you can to freeze it as quickly as possible. Here are some tips. First, set your freezer as cold as logistically possible, or consider using a chest freezer since they're generally able to reach lower temps. Second, spread whatever you're freezing out in as thin a layer as possible. In my house, we often freeze things individually on baking sheets, then move them into a bag once they're frozen. Third, put whatever you're freezing in the back of the freezer, which is generally the consistently coldest part, and give it some space so cold air can flow all around it. And fourth, don't freeze too much food at once. No matter what you do, you will still get those microscopic ice daggers, but faster freezing will keep them as small and their damage as minimal as possible. Commercial operations like frozen food companies and even some fishing boats way out at sea have fancy equipment to flash freeze their food really fast to really cold temps, so they get even better results than you can get at home. Let's go back to the scientific literature once more though, because there's one other interesting finding I wanna talk about. The longer food spends frozen, the more damage it accumulates. More holes, more mushiness, less moisture, which at first didn't make any sense to me. Once something is frozen, why does keeping it frozen make any difference at all? Well, it's easy to think of freezing as the suspended state in which nothing happens, but that's not really the case. Ice crystals are inherently unstable, so they're constantly reorganizing themselves. For complicated chemistry reasons, this reorganizing generally leads to larger and larger crystals. The higher the temperature, the faster this reorganization happens. And if the temperature fluctuates, like it does every time your freezer's compressor cycles, every time you put a bunch of not yet frozen food in there, every time your kids open the door to see if you bought more dino nuggets, the faster the crystals reorganize themselves into larger daggers. And as we know, larger crystals wreak more havoc on food. 
Again, this process is inevitable, but you can minimize it by keeping your frozen food as cold and as consistently cold as possible. But there is one final wrinkle here. Occasionally, you might actually want this kind of damage. Have you ever had really spongy tofu? And I mean spongy in a good way, like a chewy little cube that soaks up all that delicious sauce it's in? It probably got that way through the very damage we've been talking about. As tofu freezes, the growing ice crystals wreak havoc on its microscopic structure. When those crystals thaw, they leave behind a chewy network of pores, perfect for a saucy stir-fry. This tasty trick probably came about accidentally as people preserved tofu over the winter. And the same kind of happy accident brought about frozen pears, a common delicacy in northeastern China. The icy daggers created when you repeatedly freeze and thaw the pears basically turns them into soft, syrupy balls that are perfect for a refreshing dessert. Some people also swear by freezing raw sweet potatoes or even soft cheese in order to transform their texture. So even though freezing food inevitably involves damaging food, don't get cold feet about using your freezer or buying already frozen food. Once you understand what goes on in there, you can not only minimize the damage, you can use it to elevate your food to something truly brilliant. Freeze. No, I mean like don't go anywhere because here at Minute Food, we are coming up on two years of making weird, beautiful, and hopefully helpful videos covering all sorts of stuff we're curious about in the kitchen. And we figured our two year anniversary is a great time to remind you of the various ways you can support what we do. We've already got an amazing community over at Patreon. And we've just, like right now, launched YouTube memberships where it's super easy to join us. Just look for the join button on our channel page or any of our videos. Depending on what level you choose, you will get all sorts of cool perks, from polls about future topics, to loyalty badges and fun emojis, to gorgeous printables, to your name on screen. Then there's Super Thanks, where you can show your appreciation for Minute Food with a quick one-time transaction. And of course, if financial support isn't right for you, watching, liking, and sharing our videos are awesome ways to help us out. From the bottom of our weird little hearts, thanks for two years of delight and deliciousness.